Sunday morning. Our first guest is one Republican who actually did score a victory last November. Since then, he has helped to block a spending bill backed by President Obama, and he supported the president on the repeal of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy. He is Illinois' highest ranking Republican elected official, 51-year-old U.S. Senator Mark Kirk. Thanks for joining us, Senator. You campaigned Thanks against the me. president's you, bet. you campaigned against the president's new health care law. Uh, that was uh, a key point of commercials and, and uh, campaign stops. Will there be changes in that law? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the House of Representatives, I think, will vote next week by a near veto-proof majority uh, to repeal the law, uh, with uh, several dozen uh, Democratic members voting to repeal. Then it comes over to the Senate with 53 Democratic senators running the institution, a much more difficult prospect. But one key hole in the uh, bill will be blown, the 1099 requirements, and even the president has changed his mind on that part of the legislation. All right, now explain that. That applies to small businesses? That's right. The, the law, surprisingly, required any business in America to fill out federal paperwork if they purchased anything for more than $600. A real bureaucrats and paperwork employment act. And now even the president says that part of the health care law should go. Okay. Um, but it's not likely to uh, survive a presidential veto, certainly in your chamber. That's right. So maybe no changes, huh? Well, I think the, no long, the long term future of the health care bill depends on the uh, uh, president's uh, political career. If he's reelected, then we'll have to live with much of this law. If he's defeated, the new Republican president would likely repeal the bill in 2013, which is the year before most of the bill takes effect. All right. That's, of course, video of the president speaking there in Tucson, Arizona. after shooting. Do you think he's right that we need a new tone in our politics? Is there a problem with the way you and the Democrats talk to each other? I think if we take a silver lining from this national tragedy to use a more genteel tone, that's a good thing. Uh, we can disagree without disagreeable. I am a fiscal conservative that wants to cut spending and taxes, but for those on the other side of the aisle that want to increase spending and increase taxes, we, we certainly can respect them, uh, but uh, respectfully defeat them at the next election. Let me ask, there are though some conservative bloggers who call you a rhino. A Republican in name only because they don't like your position on social issues and you voted to repeal don't ask don't tell explain to those conservatives why you did that because uh, I met with the chief of naval operations Admiral Gary Roughhead who said uh, the Navy and other military services have been whipsawed by various federal courts in California telling the military to stop recruiting to start recruiting he said increasingly California federal courts were beginning to run the military far better to follow the recommendations of the uh, of the uh, 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 Secretary of Defense, who served both President Bush and President Obama, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and returned control of military recruitment policy to the Pentagon. You met at City Hall this past uh, Friday with Rosie Ann Delito, the commissioner who's in overseeing O'Hare modernization. Those bonds have been downgraded several times now. Is that project in trouble? I don't think so. Uh, O'Hare is an eminently bankable project, the number one job creating engine for Northern Illinois. 700,000 jobs connected to that. You're committed to it. I, I am. Uh, and I think. Uh, is there federal money that can help? Uh, there is. For example, over the bridge. there's a request for approximately $60 million in FAA-related funds uh, coming to that uh, next year. I think uh, the O'Hare Modernization Project, which is separately accounted for and has a separate revenue stream, is suffering from the financial woes of Chicago and the pot pot potential financial implosion of the state of Illinois. Let me ask you, Senator, about um, uh, in, in the wake of this, the Democrats only Democrats voted for this income tax increase now, 67 percent increase. What does the Republican Party stand for? Because you obviously have critics within the party who think you're too liberal on social issues. You are the face of the party. You are the statewide elected official, the guy who's going to lead the party. Ex Look into the camera and tell the voters, what do Illinois Republicans stand well, for Well, Illinois now? Republicans stand for the principle that we want to spend less, borrow less, and tax less to fix this economy. And if you look at the problems we face both in Washington and in Springfield, it is from overspending uh, by a state and federal governments that imp imperil our economic future. What's gone wrong for the Illinois Republican Party? Why, why has a guy like Bill Brady been, you know, the party, it's not just Brady, the party's lost so many suburban 
suburban legislative seats that seemed safe once. What's gone wrong? Well, before you say we lost every election, we lost three, we won three statewide elections for U.S. Senator, for Comptroller, for Treasurer, and flipped the congressional delegation from a net uh, Democratic delegation, electing uh, five new Republican uh, Congress uh, men and women. Uh, as uh, Congressman Shimka says, we won five of our top four targeted races. I think there's a growing consensus behind the central pillar of Republican ideals, which is spending less, taxing less, and borrowing less. Every other state in the union appears to be embracing a cut spending mentality. Only the state of Illinois appears to be going in the other direction. If there was ever a need for a Republican Party, it's now. We're all gathering February 5th to mark the 100th anniversary of Ronald Reagan's birth, born in Illinois. About half of the people running for president will be uh, there to uh, outline their vision and what uh, Ray meant to them. It will be a key gathering of a party that won most of its congressional races in Illinois, a Senate race, uh, the two key financial officers Going for the forward, state. What's the key? From, from where I sit, you need it, it's, its message and the people. And or, an appealing it, message and appealing candidates. And sometimes the party hasn't done a good job on that. Right. I, I think it's a couple of key things. First, on principles. We are the fiscal conservative party, and we are the national security party. About 15 to, seconds. To defend the nation. And then secondly, organization and a focus on the suburbs where half of Illinois voters live. All right. One other thing I got for you, though. I understand you have a unique wish to only have Arby's market fresh uh, turkey sandwiches and I asked the team next door to build you a full Dagwood. That is absolutely true. I should uh, I should tell uh, that you are the only U.S. Senator who's ever accosted me on I-55 as we're going to Springfield. Uh, there was a an SUV pulled up next to us and there's this man waving a hand out the window and it turns out to be the junior senator from Illinois yourself. Yes, and the reason why I started this is we stopped at Wendy's, and you wouldn't eat at Wendy's nope. because it had to be. Only these Arby's, uh, you know what, we're going to send them a bill. <laughs> Only the Arby's market fresh turkey. It's fan darn test. Hey, 